Hello, this is Jeremy Zimmerman from Colorado School of Mines, and today I'm going to talk about performing calculations with crystallographic planes. First of all, let's talk about why you might want to perform calculations with vectors that represent planes. Material scientists use X-ray diffraction to understand materials. One quantity that X-ray diffraction measures is the distance between parallel planes in a crystal. We need to be able to compute interplanar spacings for our materials so we can correlate those to our measurements. Additionally, we often want to calculate the angle between planes to identify crystal forms or the symmetry of crystal. A third application is that we may need to determine how to position a crystal to access the desired planes relative to an electron or an X-ray beam, or how to cleave a wafer properly, or if we need to measure an orientation-specific property. After this video, you should be able to use direct space lattice translation vectors to repeat a plane throughout space, calculate the distance between parallel crystallographic planes, and calculate the angle between any two crystallographic planes. As a reminder, for a given plane, we will define its normal vector r star as equal to h times a star plus k times b star plus l times c star, and the vectors a star, b star, and c star define the reciprocal space lattice. Lattice planes, like a lattice point, are repeated throughout space by the lattice translation vectors. If we take the 110 plane, which I am showing with the C direction pointed out of the screen, and we repeat the unit cell and plane using the lattice translation vectors, it tiles as I show here. Go to the right, and then tile it two times. We may want to know the distance between planes. In this case, it is easy. It is just a distance between the corner and the center of a face, like I am drawing right here. You can use simple geometry to determine that this distance will simply be the magnitude of a, the lattice translation vector, divided by square root of 2. This distance between planes is the same for all neighboring planes and is often referred to as the interplanar spacing or the despacing. In cubic lattices, the distance is a divided by the square root of the sum of h squared plus k squared plus l squared. However, as you might have guessed, the equation can get quite nasty for non-orthonormal crystals such as triclinic cells. Now we will discuss how to perform reciprocal space calculations in any crystal system. As you might be able to guess, a set of vectors in any space will have an accompanying metric tensor. In reciprocal space, we will call this the reciprocal metric tensor, which we represent as G star. The reciprocal metric tensor is defined the same way as we did for the direct space metric tensor, but with reciprocal space vectors. G star will be the tensor given by A star dot A in the first position, a star dot b star in the second position, and on and on throughout the rest of the, the matrix. This can be written out for non-orthonormal crystals to be the magnitude of a star squared in the first entry, the magnitude of a star times b star times the angle between them in the second entry, and on and on throughout the rest of the matrix. I have provided a few examples of the reciprocal metric tensor. In systems with all 90 degrees, it is relatively straightforward. In a cubic system, G has all zeros except for the diagonal in which each entry is A squared. The reciprocal metric tensor for this lattice is similar, but the values down the diagonal are each 1 over A squared. In a tetragonal system, G has A squared, A squared, and C squared down the diagonal. G star has 1 over A squared, 1 over A squared, and 1 over C squared down the diagonal. Similarly, G is given for the orthorhombic lattice. The reciprocal metric tensor for the orthorhombic lattice is given by 1 over a squared, 1 over b squared, and 1 over c squared down the diagonal. Systems with non-90 degree angles are more complicated, but if you know the quantities in a star, b star, c star, alpha star, beta star, gamma star, it is relatively straightforward to build the reciprocal metric tensor from the equation on the previous slide. If you only know the direct space lattice translation vectors, you can still calculate the reciprocal space metric tensor quickly. Because of our definitions, a dot a star equals 1, a dot b star equals 0, and the rest of the Kronecker delta relationship, the result is that g dot g star equals the identity matrix as well. This means that g star can be calculated by taking the inverse of g. If you need to calculate this, the way you'll do that is you'll take 1 divided by the determinant of g, and this will be multiplied by a matrix of all of the minor matrices of the 3 by 3 matrix. Now that we know how to calculate G star from any information you might be given, we want to learn how to calculate the length of a reciprocal space vector. 
As you might have expected, the length, or magnitude, of r star squared is given by the vector dotted with itself. As we often work on non-orthonormal coordinate systems, we can easily write the magnitude of r star squared as equal to r star g star r star. And in full matrix notation, you might write it like this. Remember that reciprocal space vectors have units of inverse nanometers, or inverse length. The distance between two planes denoted by HKL is going to be 1 divided by the magnitude of r star. Or perhaps it is better to use the result from our previous matrix calculation, where 1 divided by the distance between planes squared is going to be HKL times g star times HKL. The other thing we can do is calculate the angle between planes, or equivalently, the angle between reciprocal space vectors. We just have to remember that for any vector, r1.r2 is equal to the magnitude of r1 times the magnitude of r2 times the cosine of the angle between them. We can rearrange this as cosine theta is equal to r1 star dot r2 star divided by the square root of r1 dotted with itself times the square root of r2 dotted by itself, which would be given by the equation while this looks a bit complicated, don't get confused by this g star notation. Remember, this is nothing but a dot product, and remind yourself what a dot product tells you. I have a few things I'd like you to think about. Make sure you know what does the vector operation r star, g star, r star perform. You should be able to construct g star from g and from the definition of our reciprocal space lattice you should know how the magnitude of r star is related to the interplanar spacing for a given HKL value. I'd like you to work out for a tetragonal system which of the 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1 planes have the same interplanar spacing. I'd also like you to think about why you might want to know the angle between planes and how you would calculate this angle. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.